at number 10, Glee. Though the show Glee was a massive success for a lot of people and continues to be a fan favorite for many, there has also been a lot of negativity surrounding some of the cast members, so much so that some believe that the show is cursed. First of all, we have to address the actress from Glee who passed away. Cory Monteith, who played Finn Hudson, passed away in 2013 from a drug overdose. Mark Salling, who played Puck, took his own life in 2018. And just last year, Naya Rivera, who played Santana Lopez, passed away from an accidental drowning. Already so much tragedy, but that's not the only negativity that some of the show's stars have faced. They also face scandal as well, most notably Leah Michelle, who got in a big scandal last year when one of her former Glee co-stars exposed her for microaggressions and bullying on set. The only person who really seems to have avoided the Glee curse is the show's creator, Ryan Murphy. In at number 9, Poltergeist. This is one I'm sure you've all heard about, because it's still incredibly scary to this day. The original 1982 Poltergeist set was famously said to be haunted, and because of this, it's the most famous out of all of its sequels. People believe the curse was caused by the disrespectful practices that took place on the set, as many of the scenes in the film used real props. One actor, Joe Beth Williams, remembers having to swim among real skeletons. During and after the movie, many cast and crew died in terrifying ways. During filming, 22-year-old Dominique Dunn was killed by her ex-boyfriend. Then Julian Beck was diagnosed with cancer and died of the disease while filming the sequel. Then a child actress in the film, Heather O'Rourke, died in 1988 at the age of 12 due to an undiagnosed bowel defect. And that's not all. Lou Perryman, who played Pugsley, was killed in 2009 by a home invader. And the fact that two people were brutally killed that worked on the set is a terrifying coincidence. At number 8, Different Strokes. Another show that many people think curses actors is the sitcom Different Strokes. This sitcom, whose popularity stemmed through the late 70s to the 80s, saw a lot of child stars find fame, but those same child actors, Gary Coleman, Dana Plato, and Todd Bridges, are the ones thought to have been cursed and faced devastation tragedy, and hardships after the show's end. Dana faced a lot of struggles with her mental health, and in 1999, she did an interview with Howard Stern that ended very badly. She faced a number of harsh and cruel comments from callers, and many believe that this is what pushed her over the edge because the actress ended up taking her own life the following day. For Todd Bridges, he spoke out about how he had been manipulated by adults while he was still a child actor, and as you can imagine, that was very traumatic for him. As for Gary, he lost all of his hard-earned money when his parents used it all up, and he ended up working as a security guard before he passed away in 2010 from a brain injury at the age of 42. And at number 7, The Exorcist. This is another one that's pretty self-explanatory given that the film was considered one of the scariest movies ever made when it was released. The 1973 Exorcist was plagued with scary accidents that ended up permanently injuring some of its cast members, along with killing a whopping nine people on the cast and crew. Actors Linda Blair and Ellen Burstyn both suffered debilitating back injuries from scenes where they were thrown around a room. Since the film's release, nine people who were involved in the film all died in terribly shocking ways. Then, worst of all, a convicted was cast in the film. In one of his scenes, the actor Paul Bateson actually killed someone, and it was later discovered that he killed Addison Verrill in 1977 in real life, along with a number of other crimes. At number 6, Leo and Me. There is a conspiracy theory surrounding the 70s Canadian sitcom Leo and Me, and many people believe that there's some kind of curse involved because of the medical issues that befell the members of the cast and crew. It turns out that many members of the cast and crew from Leo and Me ended up developing Parkinson's disease. In 1991, Michael J. Fox, who was 29 at the time, revealed his Parkinson's diagnosis, and many people thought it was strange that he had been diagnosed so young because this disease is typically associated with older people. What made this even stranger though was the fact that four other people who worked on Leo and Me with Michael also developed Parkinson's and started displaying symptoms around the same time. A lot of people think that this can't simply be just a coincidence and has to be some kind of curse. Halfway number 5, Rosemary's Baby. This 1968 movie directed by Roman Polanski is mostly chilling because of its real world similarities it has with the death of his wife and unborn child. This movie starred Mia Farrow as a pregnant woman who is scared that her neighbors want to do something sinister to her and her child. At the time the movie was released, nothing felt odd about the film and it was praised as a shocking thriller. But only a year after it was released, the horrific Manson family killings took place in the Hollywood Hills that took the life of Polanski's wife, Sharon Tate, along with four of Sharon Tate's friends who were staying with her while Polanski was out of town. At number 4, Our Gang. The TV show Our Gang is believed to be one of the most cursed TV shows of all time. This show was beloved by many and introduced the world to the Little Rascals. 
Though it became a fan favorite and continues to be for a lot of people all these years later, the child actors who starred in the show suffered terrible fates and hardships. Out of the beloved cast, the first one to have passed away was Norman Chaney, who died from myocarditis at just 21 years old. The show's fan favorite Alfalfa took a turn for the worse after leaving the show in 1940, as years later in 1959 he was shot and killed at the age of 31 by his friend because of a fight over money. His brother, who was also on the show, ended up taking his own life at the age of 42. Donald Haynes passed away fighting in World War II at the age of 23. Billy Laughlin was struck by a truck at the age of 16. Clifton Young passed away after being caught in a hotel fire at the age of 33, and Bobby Hutchins was killed in a plane crash at just 20 years old. On top of all this tragedy, many other members of the cast passed away at young ages due to medical issues. So many other stars got into legal troubles, and even the dog from the show was poisoned by someone. No one from this show ended up living a happy life afterwards, and that's just tragic. And at number 3, Rebel Without a Cause. This 1955 movie was another one that unfortunately resulted in the death of multiple of its stars. The characters on the project did not suffer their fates while filming, but it's very coincidental that three of the show's biggest stars all died under tragic circumstances. The first actor to pass away was James Dean, who died at the age of just 24 before the movie was released from a car crash. Then in 1976, Sal Miano, who played Dean's best friend, was killed outside of his home. He was parking his car in his apartment complex when he was suddenly stabbed. Neighbors reported hearing the screams. At the time of his death, he was only 37 years old. Then famously Natalie Wood, who plays Dean's love interest in the film, passed in very suspicious circumstances. She drowned while she was out on a yacht with her husband Robert Wagner and fellow actor Christopher Walken. Many believe there is more to the story regarding her death, as a lot of the facts of the case just do not add up. At number 2, The Adventures of Superman. Have you ever heard of the Superman curse? Well, if you haven't, let me tell you about it because it's affected a number of actors and it might actually be real. Essentially, the Superman curse is the superstition of sorts that says that anyone who plays a part in a Superman production will be cursed and will be affected negatively in some way. The first supposed victim of the Superman curse was an actor named George Reeves. George played Clark Kent, aka Superman, in the show The Adventures of Superman from 1951 to 1958. He had a really successful film career before starring in this TV show, having been in over 40 films, but after taking up the mantle of Superman, things went downhill for him and his career. He became so closely linked to the role of Superman that it became very difficult for him to land any other roles, and this made his career come to a standstill. Things were really bad for George, and sadly, in 1959, just days before his wedding, George took his own life. After this tragedy, it marks the beginning of the so-called Superman curse, as other actors have also had something negative happen to them, like a serious injury or relationship troubles. But do you think that this curse could actually be real? And finally, number one, Twilight Zone the movie. This movie is craziest of all because multiple actors passed away well on the set of the film, shooting a scene that went horribly wrong. The 1983 movie was based on the hit show of the same name. The movie itself was really not all that scary, but the events that happened on set are. While Vic Morrow and two child actors named Renee Shin Chen and Micah Din Lee were shooting a helicopter scene, there was a terrible accident and all three of them died. It was a Vietnam War battle scene and they were running away from a helicopter. But back in these days, special effects weren't what they are now, and the special effects explosions on the set caused the pilot of the helicopter to crash right into them. Even more tragic, the accident took place on the last day of filming. And just when things couldn't get any worse, the director actually kept this scene in the movie. In at number 10, Jesse Lucan. Glee actor Jesse Lucan, who played the character of Bobby Boom Boom Surrett, was busted in 2018 for a DUI when he crashed his car. Local Glendale law enforcement told TMZ that they received calls of a car crash and when they arrived on the scene, found Lucan's Toyota up on the curb with the airbags deployed. No other cars seemed to be involved in the crash and his right front tire was absolutely mangled. Jesse reeked of booze and utterly failed his field sobriety test which then led to probable cause to arrest him for driving under the influence. Jesse was part of the show for most of 2012 but just like his fellow co-stars his life has been in turmoil since his departure from the show. I know these may seem like curses but I think at the root this is more of a problem with Hollywood actors or Hollywood in general and just allowing them to kind of do whatever they want. I'm sure we'll see more examples of that later on. In number 9, Becca Tobin. Becca Tobin played the role of Kitty Wilde on Glee from 2012 to 2015 and although she seems to have made it out unscathed, her boyfriend was not so lucky. Her boyfriend was a nightclub owner named
named Matt Bendick, and unfortunately in 2014, he was found dead in a hotel room in Philadelphia. According to those close to the family, Becca and Matt were believed to have been on a business trip at the time of the tragedy. His family believes that he may have died from a heart attack amid the stress brought on by managing all of these businesses in his life. The eerie thing is that this happened one year after the death of Tobin's co-star, Corey Monty. According to TMZ, a hotel maid found Bendick's body at around 1 p.m., and law enforcement sources say that the housekeeper found the body on the bed face down. Bendick ran several major clubs around the country, but especially in Los Angeles, which is where he was the director of operations at the DBA nightclub. He also was a co-owner of AV nightclub, and according to his friends, he was not known as a partier. On Instagram, Becca posted a tribute to her boyfriend saying, thank you all for the love and support. Matt was the most extraordinary man I knew, and he will live in my heart forever. In at number eight, Jim Fuller. Jim Fuller was the assistant director of Glee and had been part of the crew for a long time. Out of the tragic endings that have befallen most of the Glee cast, Jim passed away due to natural causes. Jim was 41 at the time and passing his sleep due to heart failure. In season four of the show, they actually did a tribute for him, and when Emma and Shu are having their wedding seat chat, a chair can actually be seen in the foreground with Jim's name on it. It was a nod to the longtime crew member who was loved by so many. To speculate on this Glee curse that everyone is obsessed with, I think it was more so the pressure of the show that caused a lot of terrible outcomes for all of those involved. Again, as I mentioned, Hollywood has a tendency of breaking even the strongest of people. Jim may have suffered from heart failure because of the stress of working on the show year after year. A heavy work schedule with long filming days for several years isn't the best way to keep your heart in a healthy state. In at number seven, Leah Michelle. Something that adds to the pressure of filming is who you have to work with. If you're working in a toxic environment day after day and the person bullying you is the star, this can have some nasty outcomes. Leah Michelle has been accused by several people for being in kind of an absolute nightmare to work with. Her co-star Matthew Morrison appeared via Zoom on FUBAR Radio's Access All Areas and was asked about Leah's bullying and he seemed to get visibly uncomfortable. He immediately attempted to downplay the accusations and shift topics by saying that bigger issues are going on in the world right now. He's not wrong, but this is also something we need to discuss. Here's a prime example of why the cast has had such a terrible time following the show. I think that whatever went on behind the scenes was kept hidden from the public. They play these cheerful high school kids but in reality, they were all adults with some demons. Now, with Matt not acknowledging the accusations made against Leah and covering for her, it only discredits what these people have kind of opened up to say about her. In number six, Samantha Ware. One of Leah Michelle's accusers is Samantha Marie Ware, who appeared in the show in season six as the character Jane Hayward. The accusation was that Leah had participated in traumatic microaggressions that made her reconsider her career. This came to light when Leah Michelle tweeted about Black Lives Matter following the death of George Floyd. Samantha replied to this tweet saying, remember when you made my first television gig a living hell? Cause I'll never forget. I believe you told everyone that if you had the opportunity, you would in my wig. Amongst other traumatic microaggressions that made me question a career in Hollywood. Leah Michelle, who played the character Rachel Berry, apologized for her behavior towards Ware, but due to the tweet, Leah ended up losing her sponsorship with HelloFresh because of the accusations. Racial discrimination on set could be a very good reason this show might be cursed. At least culturally. In number five, Amber Riley. Amber Riley, who played Mercedes Jones in the show, said that she received many notes from actors of color who had, let's say, less than perfect interactions on the set of Glee. While speaking on Instagram Live with journalist Danielle Young, they discussed racism while on set. In the video, Amber said, in my inbox, there are a lot of black actors and actresses telling me their stories and letting me know they have dealt with the same things being on set, being terrorized by the white girls that are the leads of the show. I mean, that, it's gonna be traumatic. It's gonna cause, gonna cause some problems. In at number four, Nancy Motes. This one was really heartbreaking and, and it came a year after Monteith and Jim Fuller had just passed. Nancy was not only the sister of Julia Roberts, but she also worked as a production assistant on Glee. At the age of 37, she died after drowning in a bathtub though. Police reported that there were prescription and non-prescription pills where she was and a suicide note was found as well. She claimed in her final note that Julia Roberts specifically had been so cruel to her that she drove her into the deepest depression she had ever been in. Following the death of Nancy and Jim, fellow production assistant Christina Legman spoke to the Daily Mail about the concern of Glee being cursed. Christina said, she was such a good friend to me, it's just shocking. Yes, she had her own little struggles, but when we got together, we just bonded and she never let them get to her. It's such a shock. What with Corey passing last year, then we had a crew member, Jim Fuller, die. Now we've got this hit and it's almost too much. Glee was like a family. We spent 12 hours a day together. We would refer to each other as the Glee family. In number three, Corey Monteith. In 2013, 
2017, Michelle's on-screen and real-life boyfriend Corey Monty died at age 31 from an accidental drug and alcohol overdose. The actor who played Finn Hudson was open about his struggles with addiction before his death. The British Columbia Coroner Service said investigators found a spoon with drug residue and a used hypodermic needle in the hotel room where his body was found. The coroner Claire Thompson said in a report that she would classify his death as accidental, adding that Mr. Monteith was found in a collapsed position on the hotel room floor and appeared to have been dead for several hours. Corey's death was also written into the show that year in an episode called The Quarterback, though they never revealed how his character died in the show, although you could see the pain in everyone's face as they did their very best to honor his memory. His mother Ann McGregor spoke about her son's death to People Magazine and explained that she took her son to rehab at ages like 15 and 19, even saying that his curiosity led him into a dark world that would further consume him. According to his mother, he also began using drugs after landing his role on Glee. In her opinion, he wasn't ready for the Hollywood world and drugs were his way of checking out. In number two, Mark Selling. Mark was cast in the TV show Glee in 2008, playing American football star Noah Puck Puckerman. During his six seasons for the show, his performances led to Solling being nominated for a Teen Choice Award for Male Breakout Star. After police were reportedly tipped off by one of the star's ex-girlfriends, he was arrested on December 29, 2015, but wasn't charged with receiving and possessing child until May 27, 2016. On January 30th, TMZ reported that Solling had taken his own life just weeks before he was due to be jailed over these charges. His lawyer would later confirm the death of the actor who was found dead in a field close to where he lived. The haunting part about this is that people are pointing to an episode of the show where this very thing was predicted. Last but certainly not least in our number one spot, Naya Rivera. Naya Rivera played the character of cheerleader Santana Lopez in 113 episodes of the hit musical show. In November 2017, though, she was arrested for domestic battery, and the 31-year-old's then husband actor Ryan Dorsey told the deputy that she struck him in the head and face. The couple were reportedly arguing over their son, but the charges were then dropped in January of 2018 after Dorsey decided not to seek prosecution. The couple finalized their divorce in June 2018 after nearly four years of marriage. As I say this though, we are deeply saddened to learn that she has gone missing after her son was found alone in a pontoon boat on Lake Pyro. They are assuming that she had drowned, but the Ventura County Sheriff's Office has regularly been posting updates saying that they will continue to search for her. Following the 911 call, they tweeted, multiple teams of professional search and rescue personnel are actively searching Lake Pyro for clues to the location of Naya Rivera. With over 80 people involved in the search right now, we are using helicopters, boats, ATV vehicles, and ground personnel to try and locate her. Hopefully she will be found soon so that her family can at least be at peace. I mean, the tragedies that have been followed in the cast of Glee have come from all angles, and I, I hope I didn't offend anyone by speculating that the show may be cursed because of these accidents. I mean, they're certainly all tragic, and again, with Naya Rivera, we just wish the best to her family. At the beginning of our list, in spot number 10 is Annabelle. Like The Conjuring movies, Annabelle is another movie associated with Ed and Lorraine Warren's paranormal investigations. But in this one, it is not a house that's haunted, it is a doll. The very possessed doll is believed to be what actually cursed the movie. There is even more proof than that though. One time on set, an actor who was dressed up like the demon walked by a big lighting fixture and it came crashing down on a janitor who was working behind him. In the original movie script, the janitor died the same way in the exact same hallway. There is just way too much coincidence in that for there to be a realistic explanation, you know? The director of the movie, John R. Leonetti, also reported that he saw three finger slashes drawn through the dust along a window. It wasn't just someone's fingers though, it looked identical to the three talons that the demon has in the movie. He said it was so spooky that he had to take a picture of it to even believe it. When speaking on the movie being cursed because the animal doll is in fact a real haunted doll, he says, the fact it is real is awesome because it really sets the tone because it is real. It could really effing scare people. Actually, one guy I knew died after he saw it. Crazy sh**. That is crazy sh**. Man. Up next at number 9 is The Omen. The movie is all around the topic of the Antichrist, so it's no surprise that people believe the movie has a dark curse attached to it. There's some proof in the pudding though. There's a laundry list of incidents that people have linked to the curse of the film. Let's power through some of the things on the list. For starters, Star Peck and screenwriter David Seltzer and producer Harvey Bernhard were all struck by lightning. And the chances of being struck by lightning are very slim, so it's crazy that it happened to all three of them. Also during filming, Donner's Hotel was bombed by the IRA. and then. Star Peck almost boarded a flight to Israel for one of the movie locations, but the flight ended up crashing and killed everyone on it. But the scariest and most tragic incident of all was after filming. Special effects director John Richardson and his assistant Liz Moore got into a car accident and her head was decapitated. The accident happened on Friday the 13th and also mimics a scene from the movie when a man gets decapitated by a moving vehicle. So the number 8 spot is The Possession. The movie strives off the story of a debook box. According to Dr. Jeremy Dow, 
Sauber, debuck is the Jewish term for a restless spirit that finds refuge in a living creature. The 2012 movie was based on a true story of a couple who found the box and kept it, not thinking anything of it of course. For the movie shoot, a fake debuck box was used, but actor Jeffrey Dean Morgan has admitted that he knew something was very wrong on set. He said, There were some weird things going on on set, lots of light bulbs exploding, just overall kind of creepiness. Don't mock the box was sort of the mantra that we lived by while we were filming this. He went on to say that while shooting, props would go up in flames without any explanation, and at one point, the real owners of a debuck box offered to give the box to them for shooting, which they politely declined. And not long after, their storage facility burnt to the ground with the fake box inside of it, which is wild. And good thing they didn't take the real one. In spot number seven is the Amityville Horror. The original 1979 movie was believed to be cursed, with actor James Brolin admitting he experienced paranormal activity while filming it. But it seems like the curse continued on to the future 2005 remake. Right before they started filming the movie, the body of a fisherman washed up on the shore of their set, which of course alarmed them. Not the way you really want to start off a film. Actor Ryan Reynolds also admits that he felt the movie had evil link to it. He said that throughout the filming process, he kept waking up at the same time every night that his character did in the movie. Think that's weird? Well, just four weeks before the film premiered, the man that Ryan's character is based on, George Lutz, dropped dead out of nowhere. The easiest explanation for all of it is to say that it's all a weird coincidence, but I'm not buying that as an excuse. I would not mess with these kind of movies. Sliding into number six is Rosemary's Baby. People who worked on the 1968 movie admitted that strange things happen while filming the movie, like strange noises and things moving on their own. You know, the typical paranormal stuff. After filming, an evil curse seemed to follow people who worked on the film. A horrific incident happened after filming, and you are probably familiar with the story. Roman Polanski's wife, Sharon Tate, was brutally while she was pregnant with her child. If that incident is enough to convince you that the movie has a curse, the producer William Castle started receiving threatening letters that claimed he was going to get an illness. Not long after, he actually suffered from the exact illness that the letters predicted, and he said he believed it was because of the cursed film. He revealed that he started to hallucinate in the emergency room and started yelling out quotes from the movies. He swears one time he saw Rosemary standing over him holding a knife in the hospital room. Happy through list number five is The Innkeepers. The movie was a favorite for all moviegoers out there when it came out back in 2011. It's known for being a cursed movie from the day that filming started. A big reason why is because the director, Ty West, decided to house the movie crew and himself in one of the most haunted hotels in Connecticut while they shot the film. It's called The Yankee Peddler Inn and it's known for having poltergeist activity, ghostly appearances, and causing nightmares for all of its visitors. West, being an artistic director, decided to model The Innkeepers movie after the stories he had heard about the real hotel. So guess what? He decided to film the whole movie inside that real hotel. So it's pretty obvious that filming the movie in the real haunted hotel added realism to a whole other level. The cast and crew said that light bulbs would always shatter when they were filming, and one actress admits that she almost quit because of the nightmares that she was having. Here we are number four with The Conjuring. Some might say The Conjuring has one of the most violent curses attached to it as it's believed to have affected its sequels as well. Annabelle, for example. As you might know, The Conjuring was based on a true story of what happened in the house of the Perrin family, which was allegedly haunted by a witch. While filming the movie, one staff member said her dog was behaving strangely and would growl at thin air and squirm with some sense of fear. Once the filming was over, the dog went back to acting normal. And we all know that when dogs see sh** in a room, they just kind of stand there as their bargain. It's weird. Another actress fell ill and went to the hospital and told the doctors that it was the strange air that went around set that got her sick. On top of this, leading actress Vera Farmiga, who plays Lorraine Warren, was the first one to admit that she felt the movie was cursed. She actually refused to bring the script home with her because she thought it would bring bad energy into her home, but that didn't stop an entity by showing up on her laptop. She says that she found three slash marks on her laptop screen one night, which represents the three talents a demon has in the movie, like the director from Annabelle. In our third spot is a classic, The Exorcist. First off, the first ever screening of the movie took place across from a 16th century church, which happened to get struck by lightning, which has to make you wonder. However, while filming, the film set actually caught fire in the room that was supposed to be the family's home. Reagan's room, however, the character who gets possessed, was untouched by the fire, which is basically impossible. There was a total of eight deaths that happened during and after production, all people who were working on the movie. Two actors died shortly after production, and both of their characters happened to die in the movie as well. The voice actor 
actress who played the demonic entity, Mercedes McCambridge, died shortly after the film premiered at theaters. She was also the victim of a tragic domestic violence related killing. The deaths were happening on a recurring basis, and some cast members say they also had several relatives passing away during the year that the film was being made. Taking the number two spot on our list is The Crow. The script was originally written after the tragic death of one of the writer's wives. Once production began, the entire movie's filming process was just one tragedy after another. Crew members were being accidentally electrocuted, they were getting stabbed through the hand with screwdrivers, and also had to deal with set trucks being set on fire randomly. All these weird notions happen without any explanation. But the most famous victim of the movie curse is Brandon Lee, Bruce Lee's son. Brandon Lee was killed at the young age of 28 while filming the final scene of the movie. They had a prop pistol that was supposed to carry a blank bullet, but had a real one inside of it instead. He was shot in the stomach and killed immediately. What makes the whole thing even more eerie? Apparently Brandon told people beforehand that his family was cursed. He said his grandfather had picked off a Chinese businessman back in the day and that he put a curse on their family. Taking the number one spot on our list is The Poltergeist. It's one of the most notoriously unlucky movies in the history of cursed films. There are so many strange deaths and occurrences tied to The Poltergeist curse, I think I should just power through some of them for you guys. Starting off with the deaths of two actresses who starred in a movie. Heather O'Rourke died at just 12 years old not long after the release by an undetected illness. Another actress, Dominique Dunn, died during the filming process when she was just 23 years old. She was strangled to death by an abusive ex-boyfriend. Another occurrence happened on set when a mechanical puppet malfunctioned and tried to strangle the actor Oliver Robbins. And Steven Spielberg himself had to step in and pull it off of him. And one final strange occurrence was the actress Jo Beth Williams admitted that every single picture in her home would be tilted after she filmed on set. She told E, I began to think, is somebody trying to send me a message that I shouldn't be doing this film? Uh, yeah. Probably. Coming in at 10, The Amityville Horror 1979. Released back in 1979 and starring James Brolin, the father of Josh Brolin, don't get them confused, and Margot Kidder, the film of course follows newlyweds who move into a large home where mass was committed and quickly begin to experience strange manifestations which drive them away. Now whenever you're making a horror movie based on a true story you know it's going to be creepy and this case is no different. The Amityville Horror is based on the paranormal experiences of the Lutz family after moving into a haunted house on 112 Ocean Avenue in Amityville, New York. Prior to the Lutz family moving in, previous resident Ronald DeFeo Jr. shot and killed his entire family. The Lutzes claim that they were forced out of the home by some sort of evil entity. Now the true story faced a lot of criticism with many claiming it was fake, even James Brolin, star of the film. However, one night he experienced quite the fright. While studying the novel for the film, which he was initially hesitant to take part in, his pants fell from the hangar, causing him to jump up and nearly crash his head through the ceiling. He immediately agreed to the role. Spooky. Coming in at number 9, The Exorcism of Emily Rose, 2005. Released in 2005, The Exorcism of Emily Rose follows a lawyer who takes on a negligent homicide case involving a priest who performed an exorcism on a young girl. Now, The Exorcism of Emily Rose very quickly proved itself to be a bone chilling exorcism movie based on a true case that occurred in the 1970s, to the point that it seemed some of the strange events were rubbing off on the actress. Jennifer Carpenter, who played Emily Rose, encountered a lot of oddities while filming. Her stereo would play at odd hours of the night, often turning itself on and off without being touched. Now it only happened a few times, but the actress has stated that it did terrify her, with it blasting music really loud, even one time playing Pearl Jam's Alive. Spooky stuff. Coming in at 8, The Conjuring 2013. I love The Conjuring series, and I'm waiting with bated breath for chapter 3, however, let's discuss the first two movies. The cursed movies. Apparently cursed. The Conjuring was released back in 2013 and was directed by James Wan. It followed paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren who worked with the family to help free them from a dark presence terrorizing their farmhouse. So of course it only makes sense that a movie based on witchcraft and the paranormal would end up carrying some pretty bad vibes. As most know, The Conjuring was based on the true story of what happened when Ed and Lorraine investigated a house that was allegedly haunted by a witch. And everything about the movie seemed cursed, even down to the script. Almost everyone on set claimed to feel unsettled and unusually jittery 
with many feeling watched by a menacing presence. One crew member's dog even began to behave strangely, growling at nothing and once the film wrapped, the dog returned to acting normally. One actress even reported feeling a strange wind that would blow out of nowhere, and when she fell ill and had to go to the hospital she blamed the strange air that seemed to waft around the set. Vera Farmiga who played Lorraine Warren also wasn't entirely comfortable with the film, to the point that she would never bring the script home with her. She even claimed to have found claw marks on the cover of her laptop after returning from shooting. However, the most shocking incident was the random fire that broke out on set. No cause was ever discovered, but most claimed an upset spirit sparked the flames. Coming in at 7, The Possession 2012. The Possession was a 2012 movie based on the true story of a couple who found themselves as owners of a Dibbuck box. Now, of course, the film didn't include the real box, but instead a fake one. However, the star of the film, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, will tell you something sinister was still at play regardless. He stated, I quote, I'm a skeptic. Look, I'm not going to lie. That being said, there was something weird going on. Lots of light bulbs exploding, just overall kind of creepiness. Don't mock the box was sort of the mantra that we lived by while we were filming this. However, their mantra didn't seem to help because during shooting, props would often ignite by themselves. At one point, the real owner of a Dybbuk box offered to give them the box for the shoot. They very quickly declined. Thankfully. Coming in at 6, The Crow 1994. Released in 1994, The Crow starring Brandon Lee follows a man who is brutally murdered and comes back to life as an undead avenger. Now, Brandon was of course the son of famous martial arts actor Bruce Lee, however, tragedy struck while Brandon was filming some of the final scenes for The Crow. One scene involved Brandon being shot with a rubber bullet, however, there was a metal shard lodged in the chamber and when the bullet hit Brandon, it killed him. He was just 28 years old at the time. Now it was just a freak accident, however when you couple the tragedy with his father Bruce's death at 32, things get a little creepier. His father Bruce supposedly had premonitions of his death, including one that told him he would only live half the time of his father, who was 64 years old. Brandon himself even admitted to believing in their family's curse. Coming in at 5, Rosemary's Baby 1968 Rosemary's Baby is a film that is rife with paranormal goings on, on and off screen. Directed by Roman Polanski and starring Mia Farrow, the the film follows a young couple who move into a new apartment only to be surrounded by peculiar neighbours and strange occurrences. When the wife becomes mysteriously pregnant, paranoia over the safety of her unborn baby quickly sets in. Now things get very odd very quickly here, so keep up. Anton LaVey, who was rumoured to play the devil in Rosemary's Baby, which never happened, he of course went on to found the Church of Satan. He was also friends with Susan Atkins, who would go on to play a role in the murder of Sharon Tate, Polanski's pregnant wife. Producer William Castle also received threatening letters following the film's release, and in turn he suffered from a debilitating health issue soon after, which convinced him the movie was cursed. During one emergency room visit, he apparently screamed, Rosemary, for God's sake, drop the knife. And finally, the composer of the movie died of a mysterious brain injury after filming. Coming in at 4, The Innkeepers 2011 The Innkeepers is a fantastic indie horror movie that was primarily filmed in a reportedly haunted hotel in Connecticut, the Yankee Peddler Inn. The Innkeepers follows the final days at the Yankee Peddler Inn as two employees are determined to reveal the hotel's haunted past, during which time they begin to experience disturbing events as old guests begin checking in for a stay. However, it wasn't the film itself that became the main focus, it was the creepy events going on behind the scenes. Director Ty West stated, I quote, I'm a skeptic so I don't really buy it, but I've definitely seen doors close by themselves, I've seen a TV turn off and on by itself, lights would always burn out in my room. Everyone on the crew has very vivid dreams every night which is really strange. However, the creepiest story involves the honeymoon suite, which is where the most ghostly activity took place. Ty West picked that room because it was big enough to do a dolly shot. No more thought than that went into it. However, it is then that he and the rest of the cast found out that the honeymoon suite is the most haunted room in real life. That can't just be a coincidence. Were they lured in by the spirits? Not only that, but the star of the film Sarah Paxson would wake up every night believing someone was in her room watching her. Spooky. Coming in at 3, The Exorcist 1974. When The Exorcist was released, audience members fainted and vomited in the movie theatres during the release of William Friedkin's chilling film. When you're dealing with the devil, you know it's not going to be a fun time. The Exorcist of course follows a young girl, Reagan, who becomes possessed by a demon after playing with a Ouija board, and the movie made national news when a church across the street from a theatre premiering the film was struck by lightning, causing the cross to fall to the ground. For instance, I think not. Weirder still actor Jack McGowan, who played Burke Dennings in the movie, developed the flu shortly after filming and sadly passed away. According to reports, there are at least eight deaths associated with the
the production of The Exorcist. And on top of that, the set for the McNeil home burned down in a studio fire. The only room left untouched by the flames was Reagan's room. Coming in at 2, The Omen 1976. We've discussed The Omen numerous times on this channel, but for those who don't know, the film follows the mysterious deaths that begin to surround an American ambassador who quickly comes to believe that his child could in fact be the Antichrist. Now, like most of our numbers, The Omen is yet another film that had just as terrifying off screen tragedies than it did on screen, and that's saying something. Star of the film Gregory Peck and screenwriter David Seltzer were aboard a plane when it was struck by lightning, during which time producer Harvey Bernard was almost struck by lightning in Rome. Not only that, but several other people were also involved in traumatic events. During filming, Donna's hotel was bombed by the IRA, and Peck almost boarded a flight that crashed and killed everyone. Not only that, but Peck's son committed suicide several months before. Before filming began, and following production, special effects director John Richardson and his assistant Liz Moore were involved in a serious car accident that decapitated Moore. All in all, anyone that had any involvement in the making of The Omen met a grisly fate. And finally, coming in at number one, Poltergeist 1982. Poltergeist to this day is still considered to be one of the scariest films of all time, and not just on screen, off of it as well. The film follows a young family as their lives are turned upside down when malevolent ghosts invade their home and their daughter is abducted by evil spirits. Now, During and after production, many strange events unfolded, leading folks to believe that the movie was cursed. Dominique Dunn, who starred in the film, was murdered by her boyfriend at the age of 22. Julian Beck, who played Henry Kane, died of stomach cancer in 1985. Will Sampson, who played Taylor in Poltergeist 2, died in 1985 of post-operative kidney failure. However, the most bizarre of all of these was the death of Heather O'Rourke, who played Carol Ann in all three films. During production of the the third film, 12 year old Heather died whilst filming the final scene of the movie. After developing stomach cramps on set, she quickly took a turn and went into cardiac arrest. She had emergency surgery, but ultimately suffered from septic shock and died on the operating table. Creepier still, in one scene in the film, her brother's Robbie has a poster for Super Bowl 22 in his room, which would take place six years later in 1988. Heather died the day after the Super Bowl 22 in San Diego, the same city where the game took place. Spooky. And number 10 is Tara Reid, who has the girl next door curse, also known as the hot girl curse. I mean, if I was gonna have a curse, I think I would want this one. She was once riding high, starring in the wildly successful movie series American Pie. Tara played a hot babe named Vicky and even made the cover of Rolling Stone magazine during that time, which basically just confirms that you are some hot in Hollywood. Get on that cover magazine. You know you're doing well. Looking back on her career now though, she said she hoped that American Pie would be the springboard for her entire career, but instead it kind of dropped once the series was over. She was often looked at as the girl next door and only ever booked roles of that nature. It might not seem like a bad thing to us, being the hot girl in movies, but she admitted during an interview that no one ever respected her or took her very seriously. This pressure is also what caused her to get plastic surgery, which ended up making things worse. In 2004, she had a breast augmentation done, which left her with rippled skin Skin all over her stomach. She spoke on it and said, My stomach became the most ripply, bulgy thing. I had a hernia, this huge bump next to my belly button. As a result, I couldn't wear a bikini and I lost a lot of work. Since she could no longer book the hot girl role, she was pretty much out of work altogether. Coming in at nine, Jerry O'Connell. Now, this former icon is suffering from the show killer curse. In his early years, this star found fame when landing a role in the now iconic movie Stand By Me alongside River Phoenix. Before landing a slew of successful TV shows. However, the actor sadly has a longer list of failed sitcoms than almost anybody else. Back in 1995, he starred in Sliders as Quinn Mallory for five seasons and then went on to play a detective in Crossing Jordan for six. However, after that, he hit a major streak of bad luck, which doesn't seem to have ended. It all began in 2008 with the show Do Not Disturb, before going on to work his way through 14 failed sitcoms in just six years. That's insane. Where still, almost all of these failed to get past the first season, including Rex is Not Your Lawyer, Eastwick, and Satisfaction. Swiping the number eight spot is Orlando Brown, who lost his career to the Disney curse. It's no secret that people who have worked with Disney as a kid have sometimes gone off the deep end. Orlando Orlando Brown is one of them and has found himself in controversy ever since That So Raven ended back in 2007. He was making serious headlines in 2018 after his mugshot started surfacing on the internet. He was actually arrested three different times 
sentence in one year. The first time he was arrested in January was because of a battery charge, possession of a controlled substance, and resisting a police officer. He was later arrested in August because he missed one of his court dates from the first incident. Then, in September, surveillance cameras at a restaurant caught him trying to shut off their alarm system and change the locks of a restaurant because he was trying to steal the money from it. He is a hot mess. And we know he's not the only one who has gone through this curse, it just seems like he's the one who cannot break out of it. Coming in at 7, Cuba Gooding Jr. Back in the 90s, Cuba Gooding Jr. was a hot commodity in Hollywood, starring in movies like Jerry Maguire, for which he nabbed himself an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor. And then of course, A Few Good Men. However, he began to hit a few road bumps by appearing in a few controversial movies such as Pearl Harbor and then the god awful movie Boat Trip, which was generally believed to have homophobic undertones. Bad move Cuba. Both of these movies had a huge effect on his career and sadly not even his charisma and showbiz personality could save it. The actor has somewhat appeared to be a one hit wonder than the Hollywood icon everyone expected him to be after winning the Oscar. Sucks to be Cuba. In spot number 6 is Adrian Brody who's cursed by what's known as the Oscar curse. At one point in his career he was being compared to Al Pacino which is a pretty big deal. He became the youngest man in Hollywood to win an Oscar for best actor. He won the award in 2003 when he was just 29 years old. But in today's industry, a lot of people don't even recognize his name. That doesn't mean he hasn't had a successful career, because he has. He's also known for his leading role in the Academy Award winning movie The Pianist. It looked like his career was going to continue on that high. He was young, he was talented, and he already had an Academy Award under his belt. But a lot of people blame his future movie flops on the Oscar curse. He went on to be in movies like The Village and The Singing Detective, both of which were torn apart by critics. He's continued to book movie roles, but overall his career has been pretty patchy compared to when he was the next Al Pacino. It's almost like the Oscars set the bar too high for him, like too soon in his career. Coming in at 5, Kristen Bell. Now you may be all a little annoyed at me that Kristen Bell is on our list, particularly Joss, but hear me out, Kristen is often labelled as Hollywood's sweetheart. Ever since she hit it big on her sitcom Veronica Mars, which was sadly cancelled. She is a good actress, there's no denying that, but the film she picks leaves a lot to be desired. Desired. She appeared in train wreck movies like When in Rome, Pulse, Fanboys, and Burlesque. All box office flops that were severely panned by critics. Now, there was a movie spin off of her hit series Veronica Mars, which was largely appreciated by critics, but flopped at the box office, proving that Belle can't really seem to catch a break in Hollywood these days. She did land everyone's dream role though when she appeared in Frozen as Anna, however, the kicker is she never appeared on screen. It is simply her voice. Perhaps this is a loophole in the Hollywood. Would curse. At number 4 we have Christopher Reeve who suffers from the Superman curse. This curse is believed to be so intense that it has ended multiple careers, not by being blacklisted, but by death. There has been an ongoing belief that there is a curse cast on every actor who takes on the role of the hero. It started with George Reeves who took on the hero from 1951 to 1957. He was associated with the role so closely that it was almost impossible for him to land a successful role in anything else. He was found dead in 1959, just a few days before he was supposed to get married. It was reported to be a suicide, but a lot of controversy followed his death. Hence, the Superman curse. But a more modern Superman felt the curse as well, Christopher Reeves. He first took on the role in 1978, but in 1995 he was competitively horse riding when he was thrown off the horse and paralyzed. He was able to continue in a rehabilitation process, but died of heart failure in 2004. The death of the second Superman actor is what intensified the legend of this so called Superman curse. Coming in at number 3, Marlon Brando. Like our previous number, this is yet another actor who suffered from the Superman curse. That thing goes around. Marlon Brando is an indisputably acclaimed actor known for roles such as A Streetcar Named Desire, On the Waterfront and of course The Godfather. However, back in 1978 he became a victim of the Superman curse after he appeared as Superman's father alongside Christopher Reeve. Following this, Brando had a tumultuous life, especially private life. His son was sent to prison for 10 years for murdering the boyfriend of his half-sister. And 5 years later that same sister, Brando's daughter, committed suicide. In the in the years that followed, the actor began to let himself go physically and eventually passed away from respiratory failure and heart failure in 2004, just four months before Christopher Reeve passed away. Taking over the number two spot is Matthew Perry with the Friends Curse. The same curse went around for the Seinfeld TV series. Apparently, it means that those involved in a long running sitcom can't seem to book successful roles outside of it. But that's not totally true, seeing as Jennifer Aniston, who worked on Friends, is one of the biggest actors in Hollywood. But Matthew Perry, also known as 
Chandler didn't have as much luck when trying to break that curse. After the series finale in 2004, he returned to TV but had a very short lived experience on the show Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip. I've never even heard of it. Since then, he has been able to book some jobs like the movie 17 again and back in 2009 and the TV series Mr. Sunshine back in 2011. But his resume is pretty bare for someone who had such a successful career for 10 years straight. That's probably because people can't take him out of his role from Chandler. I mean, let's be real, he will always be Chandler Bing to me. And finally, coming in at number one, Halle Berry. Oh, Halle Berry, you guys know I'm not a fan of hers, which I also know angers a lot of you. Surprisingly so. Anyway, there's no denying that Halle is a good actress. She even made history in 2002 when she became the first African American woman to win an Oscar in the Best Actress category for her role in Monsters Ball. Her speech was, of course, unforgettable, going down in history as one of the best. Of course, following her epic win, the actress had her pick of all the movies. However, she fell into a rabbit hole of bad bad movies, including Gothica and Catwoman, for which she picked up a Razzie Award for Worst Actress. I mean, we all saw the basketball scene, she deserved it. Now, she has reprised her role as Storm in three X-Men movies, but at this point, we're over it. They rebooted X-Men. I'm only here for Sophie Turner and her crew. And that's the tea. In at number 10, Jesse Lucan. Glee actor Jesse Lucan, who played the character of Bobby Boom Boom Surratt, was busted in 2018 for a DUI when he crashed his car. Local Glendale law enforcement told TMZ that they received calls of a car crash and when they arrived on the scene found Lucan's Toyota up on the curb with the airbags deployed. No other cars seemed to be involved in the crash and his right front tire was absolutely mangled. Jesse reeked of booze and utterly failed his field sobriety test, which then led to probable cause to arrest him for driving under the influence. Jesse was part of the show for most of 2012, but just like his fellow co-stars, his life has been in turmoil since his departure from the show. I know these may seem like curses, but I think at the root, this is more of a problem with Hollywood actors or Hollywood in general, and just allowing them to kind of do whatever they want. I'm sure we'll see more examples of that later on. In number nine, Becca Tobin. Becca Tobin played the role of Kitty Wilde on Glee from 2012 to 2015, and although she seems to have made it out unscathed, her boyfriend was not so lucky. Her boyfriend was a nightclub owner named Matt Bendick, and unfortunately in 2014 he was found dead in a hotel room in Philadelphia. According to those close to the family, Becca and Matt were believed to have been on a business trip at the time of the tragedy. His family believes that he may have died from a heart attack amid the stress brought on by managing all of these businesses in his life. The eerie thing is that this happened one year after the death of Tobin's co-star Corey Monty. According to TMZ, a hotel maid found Bendick's body at around 1 p.m. and law enforcement sources to say that the housekeeper found the body on the bed face down. Bendick ran several major clubs around the country, but especially in Los Angeles, which is where he was the director of operations at the DBA nightclub. He also was a co-owner of AV nightclub, and according to his friends, he was not known as a partier. On Instagram, Becca posted a tribute to her boyfriend saying, thank you all for the love and support. Matt was the most extraordinary man I knew, and he will live in my heart forever. In at number eight, Jim Fuller. Jim Fuller was the assistant director of Glee and had been part of the crew for a long time. Out of the tragic end, endings that have befallen most of the Glee cast, Jim passed away due to natural causes. Jim was 41 at the time and passing his sleep due to heart failure. In season 4 of the show, they actually did a tribute for him, and when Emma and Shu are having their wedding seat chat, a chair can actually be seen in the foreground with Jim's name on it. It was a nod to the longtime crew member who was loved by so many. To speculate on this Glee curse that everyone is obsessed with, I think it was more so the pressure of the show that caused a lot of terrible outcomes for all of those involved. Again, as I mentioned, Hollywood has a tendency of breaking even the strongest of people. Jim may have suffered from heart failure because of the stress of working on the show year after year. A heavy work schedule with long filming days for several years isn't the best way to keep your heart in a healthy state. In at number seven, Leah Michelle. Something that adds to the pressure of filming is who you have to work with. If you're working in a toxic environment day after day and the person bullying you is the star, this can have some nasty outcomes. Leah Michelle has been accused by several people for being an kind of an absolute nightmare to work with. Her co-star Matthew Morris and appeared via Zoom on FUBAR Radio's Access All Areas and was asked about Leah's bullying and he seemed to get visibly uncomfortable. He immediately attempted to downplay the accusations and shift topics by saying that bigger issues are going on in the world right now. He's not wrong, but this is also something we need to discuss. 
here's a prime example of why the cast has had such a terrible time following the show. I think that whatever went on behind the scenes was kept hidden from the public. They play these cheerful high school kids, but in reality, they were all adults with some demons. Now, with Matt not acknowledging the accusations made against Leah and covering for her, it only discredits what these people have kind of opened up to say about her. In number six, Samantha Ware. One of Leah Michelle's accusers is Samantha Marie Ware, who appeared in the show in season six as the character Jane Hayward. The accusation was that Leah had participated in traumatic microaggressions that made her reconsider her career. This came to light when Leah Michelle tweeted about Black Lives Matter following the death of George Floyd. Samantha replied to this tweet saying, Remember when you made my first television gig a living hell? Cause I'll never forget. I believe you told everyone that if you had the opportunity, you would in my wig. Amongst other traumatic microaggressions that made me question a career in Hollywood. Leah Michelle, who played the character Rachel Berry, apologized for her behavior towards Ware, but due to the tweet, Leah ended up losing her sponsorship with HelloFresh because of the accusations. Racial discrimination on set could be a very good reason this show might be cursed. At least culturally. In number five, Amber Riley. Amber Riley, who played Mercedes Jones in the show, said that she received many notes from actors of color who had, let's say, less than perfect interactions on the set of Glee. While speaking on Instagram Live with journalist Danielle Young, they discussed racism while on set. In the video, Amber said, in my inbox, there are a lot of black actors and actresses telling me their stories and letting me know they have dealt with the same things being on set, being terrorized by the white girls that are the leads of the show. I mean, that, it's gonna be traumatic. It's gonna cause, it's gonna cause some problems. In number four, Nancy Motes. This one was really heartbreaking and, and it came a year after Monteith and Jim Fuller had just passed. Nancy was not only the sister of Julia Roberts, but she also worked as a production assistant on Glee. At the age of 37, she died after drowning in a bathtub though. Police reported that there were prescription and non-prescription pills where she was and a suicide note was found as well. She claimed in her final note that Julia Roberts specifically had been so cruel to her that she drove her into the deepest depression she had ever been in. Following the death of Nancy and Jim, fellow production assistant Christina Legman spoke to the Daily Mail about the concern of Glee being cursed. Christina said, she was such a good friend to me, it's just shocking. Yes, she had her own little struggles, but when we got together, we just bonded and she never let them get to her. It's such a shock. What with Corey passing last year, then we had a crew member, Jim Fuller, die. Now we've got this hit and it's almost too much. Glee was like a family. We spent 12 hours a day together. We would refer to each other as the Glee family. In number three, Corey Monteith. In 2013, Michelle's on-screen and real-life boyfriend Corey Monty died at age 31 from an accidental drug and alcohol overdose. The actor who played Finn Hudson was open about his struggles with addiction before his death. The British Columbia Coroner Service said investigators found a spoon with drug residue and a used hypodermic needle in the hotel room where his body was found. The coroner Claire Thompson said in a report that she would classify his death as accidental, adding that Mr. Monty was found in a collapsed position on the hotel room floor and appeared to have been dead for several hours. Corey's death was also written into the show that year year in an episode called The Quarterback, though they never revealed how his character died in the show. Although you could see the pain in everyone's face as they did their very best to honor his memory. His mother, Ann McGregor, spoke about her son's death to People Magazine and explained that she took her son to rehab at ages like 15 and 19, even saying that his curiosity led him into a dark world that would further consume him. According to his mother, he also began using drugs after landing his role on Glee. In her opinion, he wasn't ready for the Hollywood world and drugs were his way of checking out. In Number two, Mark Selling. Mark was cast in the TV show Glee in 2008, playing American football star Noah Puck Puckerman. During his six seasons for the show, his performances led to Solling being nominated for a Teen Choice Award for Male Breakout Star. After police were reportedly tipped off by one of these star's ex-girlfriends, he was arrested on December 29, 2015, but wasn't charged with receiving and possessing child pornography until May 27, 2016. On January 30th, TMZ reported that Solling had taken his own life just weeks before he was due to be jailed over these charges. His lawyer would later confirm the death of the actor who was found dead in a field close to where he lived. The haunting part about this is that people are pointing to an episode of the show where this very thing was predicted. Last but certainly not least in our number one spot, Naya Rivera. Naya Rivera played the character of cheerleader Santana Lopez in 113 episodes of the hit musical show. In November 2017 though, she was arrested for domestic battery and the 31 year old's then husband actor Ryan Dorsey told the deputy that she struck him in the head and face. The couple were reportedly arguing over their son, but the charges were then dropped in January of 2018 after Dorsey decided not to seek prosecution. The couple finally their divorce in June 2018 after nearly four years of marriage. As I say this though, we are deeply saddened to learn that she has gone missing after her son was found alone in a pontoon boat on Lake
Lake Pyro. They are assuming that she had drowned, but the Ventura County Sheriff's Office has regularly been posting updates saying that they will continue to search for her. Following the 911 call, they tweeted, multiple teams of professional search and rescue personnel are actively searching Lake Pyro for clues to the location of Naya Rivera. With over 80 people involved in the search right now, we are using helicopters, boats, ATV vehicles, and ground personnel to try and locate her. Hopefully she will be found soon so that her family can at least be at peace. I mean, the tragedies have been followed and the cast of Glee have come from all angles, and I, I hope I didn't offend anyone by speculating that the show may be cursed because of these accidents. I mean, they're certainly all tragic, and again, with Naya Rivera, we just wish the best to her family. And at number 10, the Glee Curse. The most well-known curse among millennials is probably the Glee Curse, and this is based off of the hit show Glee that ran from 2009 to 2015 and launched massive stars like Lee Michelle and Darren Chris. However, after the show ended, many members of the cast were involved in very tragic circumstances circumstances. Many even passed away. The curse began after Corey Monteith, who played Finn Hudson, was found dead from an OD in 2013. Then in 2018, Mark Sailing, who played Noah Puckerman, took his own life. This was because he was on trial for possession of disgusting and illegal content. And most recently, Naya Rivera went missing and then was pronounced dead after she drowned in a California lake while she was out with her son, Josie. Thankfully, her son was unharmed. And in an even more tragic coincidence, her body was discovered on the seventh anniversary of Corey Monteith. Death. And at number nine, Kristen Bell. Kristen Bell is an incredibly successful actress and is loved by pretty much everyone. However, people think that she might be cursed because the roles where she's been the most successful are the ones where she's not on camera. Kristen has been involved in some of the most successful projects ever, like Gossip Girl and Frozen. But like I said, both of these roles were voice acting roles. And the projects that she's actually starred in usually flop, like One in Rome, Pulse, fanboys and burlesque were all box office flops and her TV series Veronica Mars was also canceled very early on. However, she's having much better luck with the show The Good Place. However, it seems like even though she's a huge star, her box office performance is usually lackluster. And at number eight, The 27 Club. The 27 Club is a group of musicians that people believe are cursed because they all died of very tragic causes at the age of 27. The first member of The 27 Club was Brian Jones. The Rolling Stones guitarist was found dead in his pool in 1969. Next was Jimi Hendrix, who died from choking on his own throw-up during a binge in 1970. A month later, singer Janis Joplin died of an OD. Then, less than a year later, Jim Morrison, the lead singer of The Doors, was found dead in a bathtub in Paris from heart failure. And even though those deaths could be chalked up to all the partying that these stars did at that time, the members of this club continued to mount. And many years later, musicians like Kurt Cobain took his own life at the age of 27, with his sister even claiming that he talked about joining the 27 Club before, as well as singer Amy Winehouse died in 2011 from an OD, adding her name to the ever-growing list. And at number seven, Adrian Brody. Adrian Brody became a household name after he became the youngest man to win an Oscar for Best Actor when he won for his role in The Pianist in 2003. At this time, everyone was convinced that he was gonna be the next big thing in Hollywood and comparing him to other legendary actors like Al Pacino and Leonardo DiCaprio. However, his star seemed to burn out almost as fast. And after The Pianist, he made some near career-ending choices with his movie roles including The Village and The Singing Detective. Both of the movies were bashed by the critics. After those films, he has never achieved the same level of success and his acting work is few and far between. Some think his huge success in the beginning of his career caused him to be cursed, either by his own decisions or fate. And at number six, Playboy Centerfolds. If you're too young to know what a Playboy Centerfold is, back in the day when the magazine was huge, one woman would be the centerfold each month and it was a very high honor. But people have noticed a very scary trend with the centerfolds and think that becoming one is actually a curse. According to the richest, 16 Playboy centerfolds have all passed away under the age of 50. There have been a number of causes, including ODs, car accidents, and instances of people taking their own lives or even being killed. Many think there's a connection between Playboy and the untimely death of Anna Nicole Smith. However, many think this is a ridiculous theory as there have been hundreds of centerfolds without any issues. Former Playboy editor Gretchen Erdogan said in her book that she believes the untimely deaths of these centerfolds are more so due to their party heavy lifestyle and not a curse. Halfway at number five, The Passion of the Christ. The controversial film, The Passion of the Christ, might have actually been cursed. This is because multiple members of the cast and crew were struck by lightning while filming. And to give more context on this, in the US, in any one year, the odds of getting struck by lightning is one in 700,000. While filming the scene of the Sermon on the Mount, leading actor Jim Caviezel was struck by lightning and immediately afterward, so was assistant director Jim McLean. It 
was actually the second time that Michelini had been struck by lightning on the set. The movie ended up doing incredibly well once it was finished and got nominated for three Oscars. But three people getting struck with lightning is definitely a little worrisome. And at number four, Poltergeist. The 80s horror flick Poltergeist has been rumored to have been cursed. This is because two of the actors who were involved in the film had untimely deaths. 22 year old actress Dominique Dunn was killed shortly after it came out in 1982. And the star of the film, Heather O'Rourke, died in due to a misdiagnosed intestinal issue. But that's not all. Two cast members also passed away shortly after the film as well. One claim that fueled these haunted rumors even more was the claim that real skeletons were used as props in the film instead of fake ones. Although that claim has not been verified whatsoever. And all this definitely makes the movie a lot creepier to watch. And at number three, The Twilight Zone. The Twilight Zone was a show about horror and science fiction, loved by many. But many think that the film adaption of the show was definitely cursed. This is because multiple actors that were working on the film passed away in the midst of filming. All of these actors were killed in a helicopter crash. The actors were Rick Morrow, as well as two actors, Renee Chen and Maya D. Lee. The director of the film, John Landis, was charged with involuntary manslaughter after the deaths, adding even more horror to the incident. However, he was later found innocent. But of course, a tragedy like that completely changed the tone of the project and made the rest of the actors on the film fear for their safety. And at number two, the Oscars curse. Have you ever noticed that a lot of actors who won Academy Awards end up with incredibly lackluster careers after their win? Well, it's such a common thing that it has spurred what's called the Oscars curse. It says that celebrities who win an Academy Award end up dropping in popularity and receive fewer jobs in the industry after. And there are tons of names on this list, like Halle Berry, Gwen Paltrow, Nicolas Cage, and Charlize Theron. The other variation of this curse is that actresses who win Oscars, particularly for Best Actress, will later have trouble in their love lives, and their partners will cheat on them or even divorce them. And finally, at number one, The Terminator Curse. Another film series that is rumored to be cursed is the Terminator franchise. It started when Terminator 3 star Nick Stahl was admitted to hospital and placed on an involuntary 5150 psychiatric hold. Then around the same time, the Terminator 2 star Edward Furlong was admitted to rehab for substance issues. These issues apparently started when he began filming Terminator 2. Another part of the curse is Christian Bale's disturbing behavior on the set of Terminator Salvation. And if you don't remember this, it got exposed that after a crew member ruined a take, the actor went off on a loud and scary rant, swearing excessively. This rant not only drastically changed public opinion of him, but it caused a decline in his career as well. He later apologized, saying, quote, I was out of order beyond belief. Finally, original star Arnold Schwarzenegger has had a lot of issues exposed in his personal life, although not actually linked to the franchise.